I feel like Ember as well as Juggernaut are decent against Wind Ranger. And if they can get on top of her and chain stun her, it's it should be a kill. All right, now that the pause is finally out of the way, we can begin the Vici Gaming versus Team Secret best of three to determine who's going to be going up and to be the, one of the guaranteed top three teams. Both teams already starting off with early TPs, FY, getting a nice aggressive rune ward up in order to perhaps challenge for that bounty rune in the top lane. Meanwhile, our Night Stalker has actually rotated all the way out to bottom lane and has gotten a ward to block out that pull camp. It's pretty much the left most possible place that you can block, so we'll see if they're going to be able to deward that. Um, any sentries in the game yet? There's actually none, so that's kind of a big problem there for Vici Game. It is going to force one of the heroes to do a little bit of roaming. And considering it's a Darkseer offlane, they might also just double force the zone. Because Darkseer as, a, as an offlane hero takes a lot more hero resources to keep out of the lane since his iron shells push the wave up so much. But if they can keep him level one, he's going to be a little weak and it may force him to go back in jungle. So, be, oh, I'm sorry, they do have a sentry ward here sitting on FY. Yep, FY has and, uh, uh, sentry now. Is that ready to go? They dewarding that's pretty important though because they definitely do want fast level sixes on both disruptor and winter wyvern if they can. Oh, preemptive ion shell plus chilling touch. This is not a fight that Vici Gaming want to take. Secret pulling a lot of resources. The top lane, the battle through the bounty rune. Where's it gonna go? Oh, Spectre Spec picks it. it up, and that's gonna be Team Secret starting off with 200 gold lead over Vici Gaming. That's a pretty big advantage there. Um, Spectre's gonna be happy about that. You can get a fast ring of Bacillus or something like that if he wants to. Doesn't really need his mana for now, but later it will help a bit. So. Yeah, very nicely set up by Team Secret. They knew they had such an overwhelming advantage at that bottom lane with double ion shells plus uh, <gasps> chilling career. touch. And all he the gets careers, it. it's going down. Fenrir finds that opening nice and early, and Weeha is not going to be able to depend on that courier for the next three minutes. He does get his salve, but man, that's, that's something a lot of players don't do very much. The, the walking courier comes in, he just is in the area. Easy range extension by using Arctic Burn, he's able to get the two hits that it takes to get the kill. And he gets a D-Ward at the top rune. This is so big for Fenrir. And he ate it with a Tango, which gives twice the HP that a normal Tango would. So he's going to go right back up to full HP, and he's going to try and join Ice 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 as the Tidehunter, who's actually bullying out Eternal Envy decently well, causing him to miss some CS thanks to that damage reduction. He brought a lot of extra HP regen coming into this lane, knowing that he was going to be taking uh, a bit of harassment from the Ancient Apparition, but as long as he has, you know, consistently eating those tangos and keeps his HP pull up, he should never die to this lane. Yeah, he, sh he should be just fine, especially when he starts getting Kraken Shell levels, because most of the damage that A does is from Chilling Touch, and that is magical, but it's still a lot of right-click damage coming out of that, so any more Krakens that, uh, that Ice 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 can get here is going to help extend his advantage in this lane. Meanwhile, our bottom lane, you were talking about uh, trying to zone out the Dark Seer. Misery is actually just going to be doing full time jungle and let Pylai die take that bottom lane instead. I like this a lot. Um, gives, it's, Night Stalker is typically an off lane hero. He, he can pressure the mid lane a little bit, but it's against it's with a Wind Ranger, so there isn't really like a follow up disable that you can land on Ember Spirit very reliably. So it's a lot easier if they just say, you know, what, we're not probably going to get a kill mid. Let's just min max our gold gain and our experience gain. So Pilot Die will be a lot stronger than he normally is in a typical game due to his high roam potential, and Misery's just going to be slightly weaker than normal. Weehaw getting out the double denies there in the middle lane while Pilot Die just throws out a void on burning something small. To build on that, I think it is very efficient of Team Secret, especially since they don't have a good hero to clear through stacks besides the Darks here. So if he just jungles right away, bottom lane, we're going to have a fight over FY, but it looks like Pilot Eye should be able to keep in range, and that is going to be your first blood. Misery picks it up with the Ion Shell. What a sick little kill there. Uh, damage done on Burning as well. He does have spin, though, so he can stop the Ion Shell damage temporarily. And that's just some really good harass. And that's the efficiency of Look the... Look at top lane. Sure. Eternal Levy is trying to get it away to the trees. Just barely gets through. Ice 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 wants to eat through those trees and get another anchor smash. But Eternal Levy does get away to safety and will start hatcheting down those trees in order to get out. But still, the fact that they just put so much pressure on the Spectre looks like this is going to force her back to base, possibly. Yeah, and the worst thing about this is that the Courier just respawns. So he needs to immediately get the bottle mid. And because of that, he can't even ferry himself regen. So... Mm -hmm. They've got the back up there, and the, the pressure is absolutely working. Middle lane, though, Wind Ranger has been doing quite well for herself. Seen quite a number of denies coming out from Weeha. 15 and 9 already, and has been threatening Super quite a bit, as you could see. That was a bad time. Trouble. 
Oh, looking in like they're going to go for this dive here. Puppy not really going to be saved by anybody. That Orb of Venom is doing so much work, and Puppy will end up going down here as the ticks continue. Beachy Gaming hitting strong so far. Which is challenging that Eternal MV Spectre for all it's worth. It's very cool that Vici Gaming has the knowledge to say, you know, we don't need an Undying to pressure a Spectre. Let's just use a tanky hero that's able to just withstand the right clicks that his opponents are dealing out. And all of a sudden, he's really reducing uh, Jackie's farm. Like, if he uses Anchor Smash, it reduces his base damage. It prevents him from getting last hits, and he's just going to continue pressuring here. And Envy's going to have such a rough time in this lane. He's getting so close to Arcane Boots. If he can actually pop the Mango soon and then pick up Arcane Boots, he'll have a, such a huge boost in mana at that point in time. Yeah. But Pylidae does shift over. This can pressure him. They probably won't get a kill here. They're going to need at least three, and most likely a chilling touch on everybody. Tide is so tanky here. It's going to be a hard kill if they're yeah. going for it. He went for the two levels of Kraken Shell as well. This is going to be really tough. Team Secret start going into Ice Ice Ice. But uh, Cold Embrace is going to be able to help Ice, but they have the uh. Chilling Touch in through Ice Ice Ice's HP. They will be able to get that kill. Just enough. The damage of Chilling Touch level 2 just a bit too much for our Tidehunter to be able to deal with. Ancient Apparition is just one of the best counters against Winter Wyvern at all stages of the game. Uh, you can Cold Feed during the, the Cold Embrace. Uh, chilling Touch damage is magical, so it goes through the, the Chilling Embrace as well. Like, at all stages, Ancient Apparition is going to be great. His ultimate as well when he hits 6, so... Looked like he was going to be just fine there, but enough magic damage came out. It's going to be one of the last moments that Misery really feels comfortable cutting the creep wave like he did at this bottom lane because Burning is about to pick up his level 6, and with the good control coming off from the Disruptor, they could quite easily get that kill. So, may have to start playing a bit more passive. Back to middle lane where Super is dropped low once again. If Weeha hits another power shot, Super is going to be uh, dangerously close to kill threshold. Yeah, nice advantage here. You can just right-click him every time he comes up for a CS. Not the easiest lane if you are playing an Ember Spirit. Shield goes away, and he's going to have to wait for his bottle to come back before he goes for more last hits. The spin out, bottom lane, trying to stay ahead of Misery. Will be able to get a slight step ahead. And burning not quite yet level 6, unable to obtain that kill. And just pressuring like that, it's very good to zone the Dark Zero, but it also costs Burning some last hits. He could easily be the top CSer in this game if he didn't occasionally have to worry about Iron Shell damage and uh, having to pressure the Dark Seer. So mm -hmm. it really hurts his overall farm due to the fact that there just happens to be a Dark Seer in this game. Yeah, last hitting on the tower is never favorable for any carry. Ice 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 is going to be gone on once again this time around. He doesn't have the Winter Wyvern until the TP completes. We'll see whether or not it's enough to save Ice Ice Ice. It is. The Cold Embrace comes in on time. Pile I die. Challenging Fenrir for a bit of damage. He does manage to get Eternal Envy back to safety. Bit of an interesting skill build here for Puppy. He wasn't doing this in the group stage. He was getting Cold Feet levels. Um, I, I feel like he could definitely justify at least one skill point in it, since it does 150 damage with one skill point if it fully triggers. Um, Do you think they have enough slows, though, for it to be able to proc or even just deal a decent amount of its uh, that's, that's a good point there, weak on disables, but you've got Shackle Shot. Uh, at level 4, that lasts almost 4 seconds, which is the latch time. Mm -hmm. And then there's, again, there's... There's oh, Cold Embrace. Misery. He knows this is going to be a really tough situation for him to get out of, but he lays down the wall. This is start one, but he's still on top of burning. He will be able to get this kill unless the Ion Shell takes him out. No! Oh he my actually God. goes down to the double Ion Shell's Misery. He's going to try and walk away from this one, but he gets glimpsed back. He will go down, but Pylai die. FY has just blown everything, and he's also got the help of Weeha coming in. FY is not making out of this one alive. Power Shot finishes him up. And boy, Misery just created a beautiful opportunity in this bottom lane. Those kills are absolutely clutch there. Uh, the double Iron Shell, no hero can really match it at this stage in the games. You have to be so careful, but oftentimes you don't see it on the, the Mud Golem. You could barely see those little purple spikes sticking out, mm -hmm. but it's enough to get the kill. So smart of him in that situation to stick next to the neutral so there wasn't really an opportunity for an Omni Slash to get laid on. Also laying down that wall just creating, you know, even more t uh, p problems. Yeah. for uh, Vici Gaming in that scenario. Mud Golems really were Dark Seer's best friends. Even yeah. if he Omni Slash there, they're going to spawn more little Mud Golems to eat mm -hmm. Omni Slashes. That, it was such a good place for him to fight. We do have a nice little stack here in the middle lane for the Tidehunter to clean up later once he's got those higher levels of Anchor Smash. Oops, smoke coming out of Burning. I'm guessing this is going to be for Weeha. Um, Omni Slash does still strike through Windrun. The Slashes in between will miss.
FY being chased down by Pilot Eye right now. Inspector oh. is going to come in for this kill. He just glimpsed back the Night Stalker. He's going to go for the TP out. Eternal Envy doesn't quite yet have the attack speed necessary to be able to get a kill like that one. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Omni Slash goes down. Weeha running out of wind run time will be chased out by the Amber Spirit, and they do ensure a kill there. Immediate cancel TP. As they know, Weeha, so many heroes of Ichi Gaming overwhelming him, no chance to save him. It's a solid rotation, but they lost their safe tower because of this. Um, it took a lot of damage early on just because Darkseer is pressuring it just naturally. And then as they shift down, they didn't get the kill on the Disruptor, but taking the tower is huge. Because now Seeker can basically have off the map. They can place a lot of wards that cover this Radiant Jungle, and they can make sure that they get that farm and that their opponents aren't able to. There is enough for a spin on the Juggernaut. If he wants to try and go for this one, pops a mango, actually goes for the healing ward. Ice Ice Ice, of course, does have his ultimate. Looks like this tier one tower will be going down. Team Secret knowing not to try and contest. Nice little sneak around there. Misery was stuck in the trees, but managed to eat through one of the trees. Search is a decent distance away. But he's going to be running into the rest of Vichy Gaming oh, unless he just hides in the perfect spot. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, Puppy oh, runs into some of these heroes, but to be back from Super, and he leaves Ice 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 to his death, apparently, as he's just going to be chased down by Weeha. Misery reveals himself now. The Ravage goes out, but it's too late. The Tidehunter dies. Hmm. An I... awkward engagement there for Vichy Gaming. Yeah. I wanted to flame the Observer really bad there because I didn't hear the Ravage sound, and I was like, somebody's messing up. <laughs> It's okay. He was pretty much dead. It was a it was a panic ravage. He was either uses that and maybe survives or or nothing. So not Ready? the best trade there. Well, the haste rune is going to be picked up by Weeha, so he'll feel even more secure pushing forward in this middle lane, knowing he's got that escape mechanism, the haste rune to fall back on. Spectre going for all early game items, um, even Wand included. I think this is really what he should do since the Vici Gaming's lineup is so good in the mid game. Uh, maybe Ember Spirit doesn't super kick in until the 11 to 16 levels, but uh, the the previous, like, once everybody's six on Vici Gaming, they're ready to party. Um, on the downside, Disruptor is really behind due to those early deaths against the Darkseer, but once he does get six, they could definitely get some good fights. And Disruptor just naturally is so good against Spectre, anyways, because if Spectre does use his ultimate and teleports in, oh, Ulti on top. Puppy is going to go down. Burning finds a nice little opening, but it was an Omni Slash for an Ancient Apparition. Beachy Gamer are definitely going to need a lot better openings than that to take control of this game again. That's why Ice Ice Ice, he's currently trying to clear through this Ancient stack, even going for another stack, does get it. He's going to be really farmed after this. That'll be a mech, mm -hmm. so heal for his team. Although, I don't think Puppy's too upset about that death. He got six right before he died. So. Yeah, and that's going to be a direct counter to potentially the mech pickup of the Tidehunter. You talked about how yeah. the Ancient Apparition as a whole is a counter to the Winter Wyvern in many ways. Mm -hmm. And even Super's got to be a little worried about this as well. If they can remove Flame Guard in some way, and or just nuke him enough, bursting him down would be really crucial here, because in a lot of cases, um, Ember Spirit is the most dangerous carry that is picked. Uh, in the late game, whereas Jug is easier to shut down and outplay in some ways. Eternal Envy is getting some uh, free farm in the bottom lane right now while Beachy Gaming are trying to clear through that stack. Burning is doing something similar, spending most of his time actually in the top lane, farming up the jungle and waiting for the lane to push out. Yep, they basically both have free reign in areas kind of close to their offlane tower right now. So while it may seem weird to have the carry be sitting over here, by taking that tower it just takes so much more time for the opposite team to, to move across the map to gank them. Nighttime just started in Team Secret. Gonna go uh, start this off with a bang, it looks like. Smoke leading things in. They're gonna go deep into the enemy jungle, see if they can't find somebody to pick off. Super, of course, would be an amazing start. Weeha, can he get the shackle shot? Land is up. We'll be able to get that one with the Ancient Apparition. Ice Blast over the top. Oh. A quick pickoff, and Eternal Envy actually jumping in for a little bit more. Had damage was so much, he even had a Flame Guard on, but he just got blown up. The Ice Vortex makes a big difference in that, and all it took was a Power Shot, a Spectral Dagger, a couple small nukes, and that's a dead hero. Team Secret, they're holding on to so much in the net worth in this game. Pilot Eye is actually going to be brought back, does get ahead of the Kinetic Field. And that means Vici Gaming won't be able to pick him off. In fact, Pilot Eye is still feeling confident enough to stick around. He's so incredibly tanky, and Vici Gaming are definitely lacking damage right now. 
So Observer Ward that they placed while they did that gank was also really nice because while getting the Ember kill, they also accomplished something else. And that's, again, huge map control in the jungle. And this more aggressive ward that they placed close to the tier 1 mid, it's going to allow them to see people farming the or farming the jungle camps close to the tier 1 and tier 2 towers, as well as protecting any movement going from the mid lane into the jungle. So pretty safely, if Envy wants a safe place to farm, for example, he can just sit in their jungle where they're unlikely to have Observer Wards and just casually last hit creeps. Honestly, it doesn't even seem like Eternal Envy has been shut down all that much. He's sitting at 5k, just below Burning's net worth. Yeah. He has Phase Boots, Ring of Aquila, another 1800 gold to start building into that Radiance. Beachy Gaming, they're going to start kicking their strategy into gear here. They can't afford to let this Spectre get a Radiance. Burning's going to try to get an Omni Slash top. Goes for it now. Eternal Envy just daggers into the trees, but now here comes the turnaround. Pops out the spin and TP's away. I like that from him. I mean, it's limiting his last hits by a little bit, but if he gets a little lucky there, he could get a solo kill inspector and he would shoot up heavily on net worth because of that. Man, Misery's got so much farm. He's sitting at 6k right now because he did go for the very early hand of Midas, another oh. 2200 gold in the bank, and he will be picking up a mech. That's such an old school build. That was that was something that was built uh, like the era before Guardian Greaves, where you felt like uh, you would run out of item slots really fast, you'd instead buy really big items. Mm -hmm. But because he did do so well in the early game, he gets a mech at a reasonable time, even if he didn't have a Midas. And with the Midas now, he's going to be able to get some huge items, such as Shiva's Guard, um, Side the Vice, things like that, like hard lockdowns, tons of survivability. And that's going to be perfect against uh, Vici Gaming, who have both the Ember Spirit as well as the Juggernaut. Yeah. We're able to uh, react decently well to ganks. Of course, the Ember Spirit jumping away, and Juggernaut has the spin. So if they have that Blink instant lockdown of uh, Blink Side the Vice on the Dark Seer, I could see that working out really well for Team Secret going especially, later on into the game. Especially because their disables are a little weak, as we talked about before. If a, a lot of times you have to take it super late, or you have to have an insanely good game. But by getting this Midas earlier off of his early double kill, it's a great choice here from Misery. No, FY. He just found Pylai Dai in an awkward position. Pylai Dai actually trying to go for the silence on FY. Now trying to get ahead of the glimpse. Ice 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 runs into him, though, and the glimpse will now bring him right back. Pylai Dai does have that Ion Shell on him, but it's not going to be enough to get a kill anywhere. He tries to threaten FY, but it just will not happen. I, I really like Secret's patience when something like that happens. They do obviously poke and prod in weird areas, but they don't all run past the tower and say, let's save him, let's save him, which I feel like a lot of other teams do. It takes a lot of patience to be able to just cut your losses like that. Or maybe there's experience with it. I don't know. It's like, oh, Pylai dies off doing crazy things again. <laughs> in the meantime, Burning did take the uh, tier one tower in the bottom lane, but Spectre is getting uh, equal, if not more, free farm than Burning at this point. Spectre Ultimate goes out, middle lane, jump back, Ember Spirit will be able to get away from that one in time. Mm, that was a, a missed shackle, I assume, to try to grab Super there. So, kind of a big loss because they don't have Haunt anymore. Um, Envy won't be able to participate in any ganks that happen in the next two minutes, which is kind of a big deal. You'd like to jump in with Spectre, steal the kill, that way you get the Radiance a little bit faster, because the faster you get your Radiance, the more damage it does as a percentage of somebody's HP, just because it does so much damage in the early game, and once they tank up, it'll do way less. When do you think Vici Gaming um, start being aggressive, or do they really have to? They have both an Ember Spirit and a Juggernaut going into the, the mid game. They do have this amazing team fight lineup. Oh, they're going to catch Pylai Dai once again. This time around, though, TPs are going to come in from Team Secret. Weha tries to get something out, but a Static Storm is going to force him away. Vici Gaming will claim Pylai Dai's life and get out for free, it seems. I, I think what they're doing now is fine. Just group up a little bit, take some towers. With just having Disruptor, it's easier to find picks like that. And they make it work. Burning is looking for solo kills as well. Hasn't found any in a while, but... I think they're poking and prodding just enough. They, they're farming enough, and now they're going to take some important towers. Yeah, Burning is actually going to be going for uh, a Battle Fury build. Basically, Secret knows that this stuff is going to happen. They know that Vici Gaming is going to have a better five-man lineup in the early game. Oh, glimpse back. Puppy Kinetic gets caught. Field does catch Puppy. Vici Gaming, though, opting not to dive that Tier 2 tower, and probably wise. You had both Misery and Weeha set up and ready to respond. Yeah, so basically Secret just wants to delay this push as much as they can. Yeah, it would have been great to win an early team fight, but it's not something you expect when your opponents have Tide Hunter and Disruptor and Juggernaut and Ember Spirit. They have a lot of really good early to mid game stuff. It isn't until they get the Radiance that Secret's lineup really gets scary. So for now, they're going to keep doing what they're doing, which is trying to get free kills on a couple of cores so that they can create pressure on the map for Vici Gaming while allowing Envy to farm other places. Well, Vici Gaming are about to get a huge 
huge buff up in initiation as Tidehunter is going to be completing a blink dagger as soon as he clears through this stack. That's that's a really good timing. Despite being 1, 2, and 2, Ice 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 has been farming very well. Tide is definitely a hero to fear, that's for sure. He's going to need to find the openings for uh, some of his supports as both Winter Wyvern and Disruptor, I would say, are better when uh, they have a good initiator like the Tidehunter to jump in, allowing those premier static storms to follow up. What do you what do you think Super's doing here? He's got 3,300 gold on Ember Spirit. He hasn't even bought his Perseverance yet. Do you think he's going to battle for you? Okay, did he just buy it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he just now picked up the Perseverance, but maybe he was considering... I don't know, how much of a danger is that Night Stalker Silence? Sometimes we've seen uh, Ember Spirits go for the Manta build when they have, like, an Orchid hero. Uh, in this case, the only, like, the biggest lockdown would be that Silence. Yeah, I'm guessing that's probably what they did. Glimpse back here. And catch Pilot Pilot die. Die. Yeah, he's caught a little bit. Burning is going to come in. He does still have the Omni Slash. They're going to try and pop him real quickly, but Pilot died with a TB out. Super couldn't get the chains in time. Meanwhile, Wind Ranger managed to land the shackle there, and Ice 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 will not be able to keep those heroes around. You know, to be honest, I, I think Pilot Die is doing this on purpose. I'm not even kidding. Um, he's basically saying, okay, come kill me, come kill me, Vici, come run across the map and kill me over here. And if he s evades it, it's good. Because mm -hmm. right now, he just bought Envy like another 30 seconds because Vici Gaming keeps saying, hey, there's a free Night Stalker. Let's go kill that free Night Stalker. And they're using Glimpse and TPs and movement. And he went to the opposite side of the map where Envy was, which means that it takes even longer for them to get to where Envy is. We ha oh, no! The Ravage isn't going to catch up, but the Winter's Curse does. Weha's still alive, though. He's going to turn around trying to get off the Shackle Shot, but doesn't quite hit. VG Gaming, they're still hit by that Ice Blast, though. Spectre's going to come in, tries to go for Fenrir first. Both of supports are actually incredibly low. Super and Ice Blast. Oh, vacuum. Oh, vacuum coming out from Mithri with a wall over the top. The catch is four, but is it going to be enough? Super's still fighting it out. Burning now comes in with his spin. They're chasing down Puppy, and it looks like they should be able to get that kill quite easily. The Ember Spirit bouncing around. The Eternal Envy's right in the middle, though. It's going for Fenrir. Puppy hiding himself in the trees will finally die, but Vici Gamer could call it quits from there. They end up getting three in exchange for losing both their supports. That is not good enough when you're up against a Spectre, especially when the Spectre survived through that battle, got the experience, and got some extra gold as well. He did a ton of damage even without having Radiance, and boom, there it is. Radiance is up 20 minutes, even though he bought a bunch of early game items. He's sitting pretty here. The space created by Pylai Die and some of the kills set up by the rest of Team Secret allows the Spectre to have this incredible recovery. Where she's sitting at 8,300 net worth right now, still 500 below Burning. But obviously that Radiance is going to mean so much more than Burning's Battle Fury. Yeah, definitely will. And especially as the game continues, uh, Ember Spirit is kind of more of an AoE hero. Uh, and if Spectre just buys a lot of straight HP, the only hero he has to worry about is maybe Winter Wyvern's Arctic Burn as well as Juggernaut directly. And Juggernaut also won a Battle Fury build, but that's more for a let me farm really rapidly. And I like that choice against the Spectre. I think it's a decent, a decent uh, item to pick up. Super exploring the dire side jungle right now. Weeha's going to spot him out with the power shot. They're setting up camp, but not pushing in that tier two. Not yet, anyway. Ice, ice, ice. Perhaps thinking about going for the dive on a puppy. They do have the vision necessary, and it looks like puppy is going to be caught. Static Storm laid out, so there's no chance of having a return Ice Blast and allowing Team Secret to perhaps pick up some kills in return. Yeah, a little unfortunate that, that happened, but as you can tell from Secret's position on the map, they weren't quite ready to fight that. They're thinking about it now. They've got Haunt up now, and they could have started... Ooh, Envy gets initiated. He's going to be okay, though. Lost a lot of HP there, though. It's about 250. There's so. the Battle Fury for Super, but DG Gaming seem well prepared to push this late game against the Spectre with double Battle Furies. Both of their one and two position. I'm not even sure which is which at this point in time. They're going to be extremely farmed. Yeah. But Secret's gank potential is still getting gonna, is good now and is going to get even better once there is a blink dagger on Weeha. So it's getting a little scary for Vici, but I would say this game is still very equal, honestly. It's going to come down to initiation largely. Mm -hmm. They could just gank Eternal Envy m many times and decrease his farm. There's a lot of things that they can do. I think they need to stop getting as baited by Pile I Die, though most of that damage has been dealt already. They spent so much time killing him, the enemy got a reasonable Radiance. So as long as T Secret takes a reasonably decent fight, they get to initiate first and get an Ice Blast on one person, they're going to win the fight every time. 
taking a look at some of the other items that have been or will be completed. We have an Aghanim Scepter now for Weeha. Uh, FY did complete a Glimmer Cape. Burning now has a Yasha. We're going to see Secret go for the smoke in. They actually run into Super here. Does manage to get the Meteor Chains out on a Pylite Die. Halting his march forward into the Radiant side of the base. So as long as Vici Gaming doesn't get uh, an Aegis, then Secret's going to be okay, I think. I don't think they feel good about taking it themselves. They don't have a good Roche lineup. They don't have a Medallion. Um, they've got a Spectre who doesn't have any natural regen or life steal that she builds. So they don't have a good way to take Roche. That just means they have to make sure that Vici Gaming doesn't get it. Because Vici Gaming can deal with this very easily. Juggernaut's got a ton of damage. Almost a Shackle on him top, actually, but a great spin reaction from Burning. There is oh. so much damage. In fact, if it was just a little bit more, maybe he got hit by some sort of smell spell before that magic immunity, he would have actually ticked down from the Ice Blast but we will survive in base. That was such a clutch spin, honestly, because Envy even committed the ultimate. So now uh, it may just be Vici Gaming just sets up for Roche and takes it easily. Burning should be running there right now. He didn't even wait until he was full HP. Oh, Fenrir just barely off the mark with his counter ward. It's a great observer ward. They oh. seem to know. It's, it's got to be around there somewhere. They saw the support actually placing it, so... You catch it now, you take away some of that vision around the Roshan Pipter. They're actually going to go for the bite here at the top lane. Weeha's going to be chased down by Super. Glimpse back, FY still looking for the hold. Eternal Envy is on the side. They know it too. Won't be able to get that kinetic field. And Super hit by the Ice oh, Blast. Does he really so want to go for this one? He's going to catch Weeha. Eternal Envy doesn't really have a chance to respond unless he's got some backup. Misery's going to come in. Super has a Rendon to jump away to. The vacuum oh, hits him. Doesn't really have a good Rendon anymore. Now that he's just walking away. He didn't have the mana to jump out. I'm a little surprised he was able to get that kill. Uh, I thought, oh, you ran out of mana. Okay. I yeah. was like, why would he throw that up and not jump to it? Makes sense. Uh, spent a little bit too much killing Weeha there, so they actually got some value out of that. I, I don't think that's terrible here, because I would like to see Envy get his next big HP item before... I think that's more important, basically, than, than Weeha getting an extra 300 gold or something like that. Radiance top tower. Yeah, I can agree with that. I'm not sure if he's... Uh... Like the next item, Blink Dagger, perhaps? I, I feel like they Most still likely. need extra initiation. Um, and the Blink Dagger would obviously open up better Shackle Shots for Wii. Yeah, but Burning is reacting so fast here. I don't even know if a Blink Dagger is going to be enough. Mm, true. But Spectre with HP can Radiance definitely clear out the back line of Vici Gaming. Um, Disruptor is a little set up for this. He's already got a Glimmer Cape. It'll reduce the magic damage that the Radiance does. And he can also make himself invisible if Spectre is chasing, but... Radiant Spectre's got a little bit of a bug on his side. If you throw the dagger on a hero that becomes invisible, you know exactly where they are. What do you think about this Blink Dagger pickup from Burning? What's the best target for him? Um, Ancient Apparition, easily. <laughs> but you might not be able to catch him. Um, yeah, basically A is, is your go-to. Pretty much everybody else on Secret is really tanky. 1400 HP or so. Um, catching Spectre by himself wouldn't be bad either. They might get a catch here. Yeah, Venrir leads away with his Glimmer Cape. They immediately pop two different ultimates to make sure that Weeha dies. Ice, ice, ice. Looking for more, but he already expended oh, his glimpse. dodge, but he got the vision necessary for the glimpse to catch Puppy. That'll get a secondary kill. Vici Gaming, they may just be able to go straight for Roshan. Burning's inside the pit right now, doing it solo. How many glimpses have led to kills this game? The disruptor pick has completely worked out here. Secret, if they, if there wasn't a disruptor, for example, Secret would have like at least four or five less deaths this game. It's made it so much easier for them to score kills, and because they did end up grabbing the Wind Ranger, there's nothing Secret can do to stop this rush. So Secret just gonna spend more time farming away. Yeah, that's all they can do basically until Wind Ranger gets her Blink Dagger now, because now their ganks are just becoming harder and harder. Vici Gaming, I mean, at this point, you probably just keep going, right? I mean, I know you've yeah, expended so. Omni Slash that's down for 50. So, okay, so maybe you wait the 50 seconds for both your big uh, ultimates, but you could probably push down some of these tier two towers now. Yeah, I think they can. I mean, even without Omni Slash, they've still got Ravage, and mm -hmm. Ravage is already going to do a lot. Uh, Juggernaut with a Blink Dagger, he doesn't have to worry as much about being far back in battle because he can Blink forward and then start attacking. So, even without Omni Slash, I totally agree, he can definitely get some damage in. I was wondering if Ice 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 was going to go four Staff as his next item, but it looks like he's going to go Pipe instead against an Ancient Apparition. Yeah, I like that. Um, 
gives some magic protection. 10% uh, just from the aura, you can damage block with it for your team. It's a really good counter against Radiance, basically. Because mm, if true. Envy uses his ult, all those illusions spawn. They'll all do 50 damage a second, but they don't last the same amount of time that the pipe would protect from. The pipe protects up to 400 damage, so it's basically just a full Radiance counter. And because he's getting it so fast, that's most of... Spectre's damage right now, and it puts Secret in a really bad place, actually. They're just getting too many kills on Secret. Yeah, oftentimes things are... I feel like things are actually a little bit fragile for a Spectre when you're going into that team fight. If the team does have... Enemy team has just enough sustain to stick together and play as a unit, Spectre's not going to be able to get as much Radiance. Burn damage, not going to be able to stick in there with the Desolate hits as well. Mm -hmm. That's when things really start going bad against the Spectre, when you start retreating and separating. But Secrets can still get a good team fight, and that's what they're trying to do here. Smoke 4, they're going to wrap around the back. Can they catch somebody? FY is invis, though. I don't even know if they have detection. They do actually have a dust on the Night Stalker, but with Smoke Pop, they have no surefire way to say where exactly that guy is. Yeah, and they're not going to pursue VT Gaming up into the jungle. That'd just be too dangerous for, of a prospect. So instead, they're going to back up Weehaw as he goes for the back door on this Tier 1 tower. Yeah, any Tier 1 tower doesn't have back door protection. So pretty easy kill there and makes the rotation a little bit worth it, but they might get engaged on here. And Fly thinking about going in still with his invis uh, tide hunter. Oh, oh, following this up as well. Oh, the Misery gets spotted. They're going to glimpse him back. Actually, the ultimate getting laid down. They're going to control Misery now, but this is expending a lot just to be able to kill Misery again. Managed to get off the Guardian Greaves, getting out of the chains immediately. Turns around, gets back oh, him ahead blast. of the Ice Blast as well. Finally he dies to the Omni Slash, but Vichy oh, Gaming has just expended everything they can to kill that hero. Looks like they will still be able to get away as Team Secret are not going to be forcing Will they ravage this? And the oh, oh, ice! A oh. clean whiff there as he thought he could get Eternal Envy on the TP out, but no way. That would have been a great stun. I mean, it would have led to a crazy chase of Eternal Envy through trees and hills, but interrupting that TP and getting the kill after would have been huge. They're going to find Weeha, though, in the jungle. Yeah, this he's is really caught. bad. Oh, great shackle. He's but taken the away that Aegis, but it's going to be at the cost of Weeha's life, it looks like. FY, he's going to get the kinetic field, does reveal Weeha, gets the chains out, and finally they'll get this kill. Man, FY has been all oh, over. Spectre actually wants to go for this one. FY is quite low. The Glimmer Cape gets laid out. TP's away. And Turtle Levy, he's actually incredibly low. Puppy's got the backup, though. And Pilot Eyes coming in as well. The support's on the retreat. Tuber's going to be the target. Gets okay. silenced up and does die. FY tries to go for the kill on Eternal Levy, but he'll get away. Pilot Eye keeps on going for more. He'll find Fenrir and claim his M him as his own. What a great fight for Secret there. They finally got some advantage. They have been behind this whole time. A Manta style picked up on Spectre, the immediate item right after the Radiance. He can remove a lot of important things with this, such as um, the... Oh, man, I had one. Uh, Searing Chains on Ember Spirit. That's the mm. big one. It's the I... best way to prevent him from being locked down. And never mind, he's fine. <laughs> Not only is he incredibly tanky, especially now that he's got that Hood of Defiance, but Misery, after using the vacuum, didn't have a TP cancel. So it looks like Misery's going to make a BKB, I'm guessing. Um, it's a bit of a weird item to grab. After you have a Hand of Midas, you think like, oh man, he's so rich and he's so ahead. Surely you just go for the next step. But I feel like the BKB is what they need to guarantee that he gets the Vacuum Wall. Because like Disruptor, uh, Glimpse, for example, oh, you might be in trouble. Omni um, Slash, he tried to get the Vacuum out before it happened, but Ugh. Burning sticks right on him with that level 3 Omni Slash. And gets an incredibly good pickoff now for the next minute. Beachy Gaming can focus on regaining map control and maybe, perhaps pushing out again. Maybe he needs to go Scepter instead. <laughs> yeah, Prevent the, the Juggernaut from getting easy kills like that with yeah. the blink. Like, I mean, he could get Achievus as well, which would protect him in some ways, but a Ghost Scepter might just be what he needs now to stay alive. But with that early Midas, it hasn't quite paid off just yet. It's it's a hard game for him, though, really. I mean, there's so many different ways that he's in trouble. You have to worry about Glimpse into the Disruptor ulti. You have to worry about Omni Slash. That's like two very different problems that need solving. Man, they just have nothing really to deal with this burning split push between the Blink Dagger and then always making sure to carry a TP scroll. He's been able to react to the tempted Team Secret ganks, and I'm not sure if they're even going to try anymore. <laughs> Well, there's a thousand gold up on Eternal Envy now, so he's going to be moving towards his next item. What do you think he's going to build next? Do you think HP, hybrid, agility item? Yeah, I would probably say... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, is Butterfly as useful as HP at this point? I think HP is a bit more useful for you, uh -huh. just because there's still a, a decent amount of magic damage. 
I guess. Um, I, I like the butterfly idea a lot. Uh, the, they did change his dispersion, so it's not just based on how much eight t damage you take, how much mm -hmm. HP you buy, essentially. If he gets evasion and he increases his armor a bit, any physical damage that he takes is going to be reflected in a lot of ways. And also, it protects him against the Winter's Curse. He'll evade his allies attack. They're uh -oh, going to fight, team though. Secret. They're going to run right into VG Gaming. A Ravage goes out. That's going to catch more. And VG Gaming are oh, right on top of Weeha. The open gets laid out. Weeha being controlled. He's still alive somehow, but he finally does go down. The Static Storm prevents any sort of response out from Secret whatsoever. They're on full retreat right now, but Puppy, he's going to be the last one to die in this fight. Glimpse back, two heroes go down, a four-man Ravage set everything up there for VG Gaming to easily take the team fight, and it looks like they may even push uphill. I, I just can't believe only two heroes died from that. That was yeah. the perfect setup from VG Gaming. They even got the Static Storm and the Kinetic Field set up afterwards. They couldn't do anything to stop Weeha from dying. I think a large part of it was the fact that the Winter's Curse didn't hit more than one unit, just hit Weeha, but he was really focused on controlling that hero and making sure there was no Shackle Shot or Wind Run. Well, Envy's going to try to slow this down just by using Radiance Burn, but the tower is taking damage. I don't think this one's going to stay alive. Nietzsche Gaming, another five seconds or so until the Wind Ranger and Ancient Apparition are back up. They're going to start getting away. Don't want to get too greedy after a great team fight like that. They still have the Omni Slash, but no good he AOE can, He can ult to catch like up before. if he really wants to. Okay, he's not going to. No, nope, maybe they will. With the Ice Blast, perhaps. It's going to land go on Fenrir right here. Eternal Envy does go in. The Glimmer Cape is not going to come in in time. And now he's going to look for more. FY's already down to half HP with the oh. Ice Shell. He's just mowing through these his supports left and right. Super's now going to try and get away. Should be fine, but a Shackle oh, Shot shackle. him in. Super's going to go down as well. Omni Slash coming through, but there's too many units. He's just going to be have all that damage meaning. Burning now trying to go for a spin to win He's on his trouble. way out to the Zero 2 tower, but Team Secret, they're just going to keep going. They don't care Manta. about towers anymore. Manta helped to dispel some of this. Oh, oh the oh, shackle. shackle! Launches him down before he can get the quick kill. They got on five. Gets wiped as well. VG Gaming, they go too far. They go too deep, and Eternal Envy, he finds the perfect response. Man, a simple play there where they just tried to take a building, and all of a sudden, Secret chased them down. Some of the most mobile heroes in the game and the glimpse did nothing to stop envy he just popped his ult and teleported straight up into beachy gaming taking five heroes man and the crowd is loving it too they see beachy gaming they don't have buybacks on two of their heroes this could be team secret perhaps taking a full lane of racks especially if they can get more pickoffs and rear he does have the winter's curse spamming out some splinter blasts and team secret they're going to learn from Beachy Gaming's mistakes. They're going to back out nice and early, making sure they cannot get caught. Envy's got 4,000 gold now. We're going to see what item he uh, picks up right next. I would love to see a Butterfly or a Scotty. I, th I think those are going to be his best options, but he may just go hard as well to guarantee that he's always at full HP once he's out of combat. But for now, Secret basically just goes back to the game they're playing. Wait for their cooldowns, get a little map control, and then try to get a four-man smoke into a team fight. Yeah, there's the heart. Eternal Envy, he's got so much gold that he might as well pick up the biggest HP item he can, Reaver and Vitality Booster, in his inventory. And this is a really bad sign because once he completes that heart, then we can start talking about things like that butterfly from earlier, and that's going to be even more effective when, you, when you've had that just raw increase in HP. That HP is going to be so much. And Beachy Gaming immediately gets ready to fight. The reason they couldn't win that last one was no Ravage, but they will have the setup here. Yeah, the Ravage on it too here. Eternal Envy is going to be controlled up oh, immediately. No Manta. Now the Winter's Curse. Eternal Envy has everything blown on him, but somehow he's still alive, but he will go down eventually. Beachy Gaming going to look for more. Secret, they had a response with Pylai Dai. Looks like he'll be able to get out. But Team Secret, they just lost a fight right in front of the Roshan pit. Luckily for them, Roshan is not up yet. But of course, we all know it's only seconds away. A little unfortunate. Actually, it's quite unlucky for Vici Gaming. Uh, the Rosh is spawning a little bit late, close to the two-minute mark out of three possible minutes. And if they could have gotten it right there, huge advantage. Get ready. They just still have to wait for the next Ravage, I guess. So they're not quite ready to take the next fight against Secret. If they go in there but... right now, they may still have time. 30 seconds left until the, the Darkseer's back up. And yeah, they see Roshan's up. They're going to go for it now. Burning just now picking up a Basher. Soon to be a Fistle Blade for him if this continues. Nice soccer Highlight nose. Die. He's got an Axe. He's got a Gem. He's revealing all of this. The Ice Blast is going to come in. Nietzsche Gaming going to retreat out. Roshan's still decently healthy, but now Super's going to add his damage to the pool. And together, they should be able to take it. Spectre does have an ultimate, though. If they're brought a bit too low, Beachy Gaming may have a fight on their hands that they can't win. They're going to be absolutely fine here. There's no haunt for 10 seconds. 
doesn't have buyback for this one, so Aegis is going to go to Vici Gaming here. Puppy okay. getting dangerously close to the pit. Team Secret, they're still going to try and fight this one. Spectre Ultimate goes down. Puppy immediately gets blown up. Oh no, they're not going to have an ice blast for this oh, one. The the shackle. Shackle shot. It latches down Super. Controls like nice as well. The cold no comes in. It's my Super time. He now gets another slide and fits down the Glimmer Cave as well. He's getting away into the road shot pin. Mentory's trying to chase him oh, down. They him. finally get the kill. But Eternal Levy is battling out with Burning. They can't. No, Eternal Levy. He's getting out as well. The Winter's Curse doesn't catch him. Here comes the second life for Burning, and he's going to be back in. And He's mad, he's pissed, he wants more, but Team Secret, they got the kills they wanted. They're gonna try and get out as much as possible. Misery will die, but the rest of Team Secret escaped most critically. The Eternal MV Ooh. Spectre back to base. Man, if he went down there, that's that's a Rax, basically. They go straight up mid, take the tower, and even still, it might happen. They don't have any buybacks except for on Puppy. The biggest mistake made there was him. He shifted in, he died, he didn't get his ultimate off, and because of that, it took so much longer to kill the Ember Spirit. They've got an Ice Blast now from the Ancient Apparition, but it needs to be a good one if they're going to be able to force Vici Gaming away from this lane of racks. The Dagger gets laid out. Eternal Envy putting himself on the front line. Fenrir gets over the cliff ever so barely. The Illusions are pressuring, going onto the supports. This is a really nice thing about having all that HP is that he can just put these in the middle of his opponent and it clears the creep wave. So he glimpses comes back. Seconds. They're going for Army a turtle landing now, but no, the infest, the glimmer cape saves the turtle with that damage. And now Team Secret, they oh, they're, they're, they're going to make this turn around. The ice blast gets laid down on Beachy Gaming. The pipe is helping to protect these supports, but we have come in. He gets the shackle shot. Beachy Gaming, they didn't get the laner racks, and now they're just going to try and TP away. Fenrir, another Ooh. beautiful glimmer cape, gets the TP out. Beachy Gaming. Managed to keep their losses to a minimum, only losing their disruptor. But they did claim that tier three tower in the middle lane. I said gem being gone. It used to be a night stalker, but I'm pretty sure the Vici Gaming picked it up after that fight. And good for them as well, because that would have been an extra kill. Oh, okay, he's got it again. Must have picked it up on the courier. There's gonna be some big upgrades coming in. We're talking about the uh, the force app, but once again we're gonna see a disruptor that uh, goes for the Agonim Scepter almost immediately. Just okay. slightly sidestepped by the Glimmer Cape. I like that. It gives him a option that can help his allies. In the previous Disruptor game today, he never finished the Aghanims, and because of that, you just have a bunch of items that give you stats and HP. Mm -hmm. By going for at least a mobility or survivability item first, it gives you so many more options and way less deaths, which will ultimately get you your next item faster. If he actually completes this Aghanim Scepter, they'll have really good lockdown against that Darkseer. If they can actually yeah. stop his BKB, because that'll be the best response. If they get Ravage, if he's able to get the BKB off, turns around, vacuums, walls, that'll cause enough chaos that Beachy Gaming may not cleanly win the fight like yeah. they're intended. So, It all comes down to the setup, though. If, if he glimpses first, Misery can pop BKB to stop yeah. the glimpse from going through. But if they Ravage first, which it's happened so many times this game, I anticipate it will happen more. If they Ravage into the Kinetic Field with the Static Storm, mm -hmm. man, that's just going to win the fight. Seeker won't be able to pop BKBs. They won't be able to cast. They can attack, but that's about it. Speaking of BKBs, there's one on Burning now. And Daedalus complete for Super. He's really farmed. This is like a really dangerous point to play against Juggernaut, especially if he gets an Abyssal Blade afterwards. Like if, if Spectre's solo, he's still going to take too much damage from this. And for that reason, I, I'm i a little... I, the heart is the right choice, I think, but he needs some better way to deal with physical damage, whether he goes AC or Butterfly or just goes super tanky with a Scotty after this. But he needs some way to not die to the Juggernaut, because right now that's his biggest threat. Mm -hmm. Especially with burning next on the block should be that Abyssal Blade we were talking about earlier. He stalled it up for the BKB, but uh, now he's got no other slots but the Abyssal Blade. Team Secret leading the way here. The Night Stalker is waiting for the rest of his team. He has that Ags and Gem revealing Vici Gaming, but Vici Gaming are staying one step ahead. Team Secret aren't able to find their opening oh, unless Vici Gaming start turning back around, but they have full five. We're going to look towards Misery to make that blink and vacuum initiation. There's so much of Ichi Gaming grouped up. They're going to make their initiation now. Already, Fenrir's been locked in. The Spectre Ultimate gets laid out. The vacuum controls Super, but they still gets off the slide of this and bounces himself away. Ichi Gaming just want to get out of this fight as best as possible. The Omni Slash bounces around. The Ravage gets laid out now. It does clip and turn on the other side, but a Shackle Shot comes in. Ice Blast over the top. Ice Ice Ice. He is out of his league. He's going to be taken down by three members of Team Secret. The rest of Ichi Gaming just going to try and get out of this one. They've kept their two carries alive, but Team Secret 
They didn't lose anybody, and this is right in front of the Vici Gaming base. That's a bit of an interesting initiation, but it did work out. The main thing was that the Omni Slash just didn't strike very true. It hit a lot of illusions. It jumped so good at the start on Pilot Eye, but once it jumped to some of those super tanky illusions, it ate up all the slashes, and that's just too much of the damage potential that Vici Gaming has. And now they're on a big cooldown for Omni Slash. Eternal Envy doesn't need his ulti to fight, but it helps a lot for team fighter, uh, situations. Right now, it's going to be hard for Jug to deal with them. In five seconds, they'll have the Winter Wyvern ready to go in these fights and does have Winter's Curse. That was the first target by Team Secret. Weehaw jumped in, hit that Blink Dagger Shackle shot, took him out first thing first. But what I really loved about that fight from Team Secret is the way that they actually were able to respond to, okay, we didn't kill everyone immediately. They got up on the Slash, and they actually backed away from that Ravage. You know, there was so yeah. much chaos in that fight. It's understandable that Ice 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 just responds to the Ravage, sees a bunch of Spectre Illusions, doesn't know what's what. And it was two very ineffective ultimates, the Omni yeah. Slash and the Ravage. And then there was no hold down from the Winter Wyvern. So mm -hmm. ultimately, what are you left with from Vici Gaming? And just seeing him Ravage there is a really good way to show just the difference between initiating with Ravage and the difference between using a Ravage mid-fight. Good players, they're going to know what's going to happen the entire time. Secret was waiting for it. They say if if Tide goes in, that's what's going to happen. If the fight starts, the Ravage will come. So they spread out just enough. The Ravage was super ineffective. And in fact, a lot of ultimates were ineffective in that fight. And that's just because the players knew what to expect. Now got a Vlad. This is actually a really big increase for Eternal Envy. They've actually now got a source of uh, lifesteal for him. Who picked up the Vlads? The, uh, that would be uh, Pilot Eyes Night Okay, Stalker. yeah, totally standard Night Stalker item, but great on Spectre right now. Lifesteal for him. Uh, the extra five armor will synergize really well with Dispersion as well against uh, Juggernaut. Beach Gaming just found themselves a double damage, but once again, it is just the Vision game, and you can't beat Team Secret at it. The Ags Gem just granting too much of an advantage to Team Secret right now. And the Darkness Ultimate, the Night Stalker Ultimate, reduces the vision of everybody. It makes it so much harder for them to fight correctly because they can't see where everyone is unless they have perfect wards. Burning immediately blinks in with his DD, pops the Manta. Eternal Envy is there with the challenge. He's got buyback if he dies. Highlight Dye is going to come in from the side, does silence up FY. And Weeha. He's going to be looking for that blink. Dagger initiation. Ravage turn around. They're going to try and blow up. Puppy immediately gets him. Oh, now look for the shackle shot. It's on to FY and Fenrir. If they can get off either oh, one of these, they'll the vacuum over the top as well. Fenrir still no Winter's Curse as he oh, the Clee up. He slash. himself away, but the Daedalus. It just did so much from Super. He's got Weeha. They finally take off Fenrir without the ultimate, but there's still the two carries left alive for BT Gaming. They're battling out with Eternal Levy. Here comes that healing ward trying to keep it alive. Super definitely needs it. Bash on the pilot die. They're surrounding him, hoping to be able to oh, get another bash. bash. They've got it too, the gush, and oh, now it's a board. Super found Eternal Envy, they've locked him down as well. BG Gaming have won the fight oh just God. like Team Secret did, right in front of the enemy base, and they want to claim that lane of racks and make this game dead even, but Eternal Envy, he's already popped back, and he wants to get in the mix of things. He knows they don't have their ultimates. He's gonna try and pop that Manta and defend the melee racks. He goes in deep against three heroes, but he knows ultimately his damage is not gonna be enough to push BG Gaming back. He can't fight three heroes. One, yes, two, maybe, but three Three, definitely not. They're way too tanky, and he gets less bonuses from his passives because of it. They just need to keep Ancient Apparition alive. Again, in that fight, Vici Gaming was able to initiate and blow him up right at the start. They need that debuff from his ultimate to guarantee some kills. That way, Eternal Envy can commit to something that he knows will be successful. But when he has to worry about killing them all the way down, and they have a lot of outplay potential with heals and mechs and wands, then it just gets so hard. Oh, for a second there, I thought Burning was going to take a big leap of faith as he take a ha took a half a step towards that secret shop, and I thought maybe he was going to complete the Abyssal Blade now, but clearly he's going to need to wait on buyback, or at the very least have Aegis. And that's going to be the next battle. Team Secret. Oh, puppy. Oh, Jesus, puppy. He's just he been have spotted. A he does have the Ghost Scepter. That's only going to buy him a pittance of time as the spin comes in. And Puppy's just going to be run down, turns around, gets off the Ice Blast. Our Team Secret going to fight around that one. Doesn't look like it. They're just not in a good and enough now position. Roche is up. Oh, this is awful for Secret. No Ice Blast to come for this one. Which means the effectiveness of the healing wards. It's just unstoppable. Team Secret won't be able to go in. Yeah, there's there's almost no way. They obviously do have Haunt, but Envy has only picked up a new Eagle song. I don't think they can slow down this. They can see them doing it, but they can't engage. Maybe Misery can get some sort of blink vacuum, but I'm seeing that as the only chances of yeah. success for Team Secret. Okay. 
he's surging, he might, he's gonna go for it. Go. Eternal Envy, no, he doesn't steal it. The Aegis taking a beautiful back in the Winter's Curse, though. He needed to lock down Misery. And now Eternal Envy, well, he's right in the middle of everything else, but the demons are just falling to the Envy Flash. Now takes out oh, Eternal that... Envy. Weha's on the way out. He knew this was disaster from the word go. As soon as that Aegis got taken by VG Gaming, it was no bueno for Secret. As they're gonna start backing out, Weha and Pilai Dai will both survive. Unfortunately, the lanes are pushed out. VG Gaming won't be able to immediately go for objectives. And that was a buyback death from Eternal Envy that from the previous time he died, so he said for 100 seconds here. They still got the melee barracks, so maybe not the biggest loss, but Puppy dying on the mid lane. That is a big, big time pickup. That, that BKB that Ember Spirit got did so much work in that fight. Like, once the vacuum comes out, he just pops his BKB. He doesn't have to worry about magic damage. He just gets to focus. He doesn't have to worry about defensive aspects. And it really limits the damage that Spectre does as well. Spectre's not that much of a right-click hero. He needs him not to be magic immune for his damage to really matter. Oh, they actually wanted to go on Ice Ice Ice, but it's burning. Who's going to see uh, Boots that travels in? Trying to catch up the Pylite Dice on the Omni Slash, but Ice 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 does oh, have gem. a Ravage. They just surround Pylite Dice and take away that gem. One gem for each red tide hunter eye, I guess. <laughs> this is getting. This is looking really bad for Secret. They're scaling so well. Jackie had to buy back, so he doesn't have his next item. Ags is up on Disruptor. Once they be... have Ravage, like, <laughs> what do they do? I was going to say, it's going to be all about the buybacks, but Team Secret don't have any. They're just barely short on gold on some of their heroes, like the Wind Ranger, and obviously the biggest one being Eternal Levy down on three and a half minutes. DG Gaming, the pipe does help protect them from that Ice Blast. If they're going to be able to take another lane of racks, Team Secret will hold for a while, though. They do still have that tier two up. Vici Gaming can't immediately go for Mega Creeps. And they do have one of the best late game lineups, by all means. Spectre scales very, very well going into the late game. His ultimate, he can be anywhere on the map and he can participate in the fight. So it allows him to basically sit in his base while his team looks for setups. So they do have some potential to still win this, but a two racks disadvantage at this point is a little scary. They have gotten the one in the middle, but two racks is so much more significant than one. Mm -hmm. Essentially, Vici Gaming. If they are holding on to buybacks, they just need one all-in play where they're able to take that last lane, Mega Creep spawn, and then it's pretty much near impossible for a secret to make the comeback. But we've seen crazier things, and from two top-tier teams like this, the game is never over until the throne explodes. Secret are mounting their defense now, keeping themselves rather spread. Juggernaut, Super's going to come in, manage to chain down two. Immediately, they're going to go for Puppy once again. Super pops his BKB. Eternal Levy is going to start going for Fenrir as the response, but a slowdown from the Shiva is going to prevent Eternal Levy from committing to that kill. Pipe in as well as the Guardian Grease being uh, Fenrir back to full HP. Shackle oh, the Shackle. Shackle. It catches burning. They're going to go for this one. The Ice Blast, but no, the Ravage actually gets laid out. The Ice Blast is going to be able to go out in time. And now the heroes of Team Secret are just being surrounded, burning. He's looking to be able to lock down Eternal Levy, but he's getting away. FY similarly gets away from Pylai Die at the same time. Ice 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 is down to half HP, but it's Super. who's going to keep on going in. Eternal Levy pops his ultimate now. Needs as much damage as possible to be able to win this fight. Mystery is taken out right from the Disruptor ultimate. Now Eternal Levy, he's perhaps too far forward. Abyssal Blade it up. Does manage to get the kill on Super, but who cares? It's just the agent. Oh. But a Shackle Shot comes in. Wait, hi, he's going for burning, but a cold embrace is the response. And now Super's the one to blink back with life number two to catch Weha. And that is going to be an immediate buyback from Team Secret. They cannot afford to let this lane of racks go. VG Gaming, they're going to be able to take down this tier three tower. The TPs are coming in. Eternal Envy, the first oh, one. Oh, they the get him. Shot, and Super they got goes him. down on round number two. Eternal Envy's in the middle of everyone else going for Fenrir. Trying to lock him down with Glimmer Cave by his time. The Glimpse is able to get away. Those illusions going to try and chase down these supports, but it looks like Vici Gaming, a very clean retreat as they're only going to lose Super, and it looks like FY. That, oh man, that shackle was so massive there. To catch the Ember Spirit, if they didn't get that kill right there, the game just ends. The barracks were going to fall. They get FY as well. A gem is picked up, so Secret is back into form, basically. They lost another tower. They lost some heroes, but they held on. And they will have buyback for this next fight. And I think this is really key because Team Secret, they've got the most effective buyback hero in the game in this Spectre. Yeah. They can actually force a fight on Beachy Gaming side of the base, buyback, and still have the Spectre two times. It's basically like having a free Aegis, uh, mm -hmm. except, you know, it costs you like 2,000 gold. And if you die again, puts you in a really big disadvantage. But will he do that or go straight butterfly is the question. And He's thinking about it. He's going to buy the Talisman Ooh. at least. So about 750 gold until he's ready to buy back. 
And by the time the fight happens, I think he's going to have that buyback money. See, the reason I brought that point up is I really thought that Team Secret's best chance to actually win this game was to be the aggressors here. Because I don't think they can survive another fight around their own base. But yeah, Puppy is setting up some aggressive vision. So he perhaps even with the butterfly being bought by Eternal Lemby, they're still going to go for this one. The Sheevas as well, complete for Misery. These are some big ticket items for Team Secret that may change the fortune of this next fight. And the other issue with the butterflies, he's had this eagle song the whole time. Michi Gaming knows that he's gonna go butterfly, and if you look at the, the money on the two heroes where it matters, Juggernaut as well as Ember Spirit, they could both basically be like, all right, I'll have one, I'll, I'll take one Monkey King bar, please. And the, <laughs> yeah. the shopkeeper will be like, okay, thanks. Here it is. And boom. Butterfly immediately countered. And that's a horrible place to be in. It's like for both of them, like maybe he should have just bought the butterfly right away. He didn't have the money before, but he's lost so much value from having this butterfly. He gets oh, like free pick off on F. Oh, never mind. A quick blink out before the damage actually hits on Cold Feet. He's able to get away. Is it just not enough damage per tick? Uh, it takes a second to set to okay. set in. It looks like it's doing damage, but maybe it's a skill that should be scaled a little bit. But considering A's position right now, I think he doesn't need that buff. There's the refresher now for Ice Ice Ice. Double pipes, double Shivas, and double ravages being the most key thing. They do have no wards on the map. Uh, Vici Gaming, that is. So Secret's going to be pretty happy with this one. And there they are in base. They know what's at stake. If they win the next fight, it's just looking really good for them. There's a refresher on Tide now, by the way. He is so farmed. Two I'm ravages, losing, like. I'm losing track of, uh, of time here. 54 minutes in. I'm wondering how deep into nighttime or daytime we're in, because right now it's darkness. Yes, that is the ultimate. And we'll and find out right now. Because okay. this could mean, I, I'm wondering whether it's going to be nighttime when Roshan comes up. All right, it's, it is. It is. It's nighttime right now. It'll be about a minute, darkness two minutes. In. Basically, it'll be close. It might be up, might not be. But Pylite, I will have his ultimate ready at that point. So, but basically, I'm looking at it. and It seems like every single advantage that Team Secret could have going into this next fight, with the recent items being bought, with potentially nighttime or darkness ready to go for Roshan, this will be the best position Team Secret has had to be able to stand up against VG Gaming, win a team fight. And if they're able to take that Aegis Cheese, this game just becomes a whole lot closer. It's all going to come down to the, to the initiation. Another really big thing is if they could do a bit of damage. If Spectre haunts first, for example, and Tide doesn't blink immediately, they could disable his blink dagger, which is going to limit his ability to ravage. So they're just completely set up here. They're looking for the smoke. They pop the Night Stalker ultimate. So I think this is, depending on the timing, this could be really good for Vici Gaming. They're going to wait things out. Holding on to the high ground right now. Team Secret have Pylite die in the front lines. Hoping to be able to scout out any vision. They see Vici Gaming rotating into that middle lane. So many Blink Taggers. Does everybody on Vici Gaming have one? Uh, they actually do. That's five Blink Taggers, guys. Initiation for Day Super. We'll take an Ice Blast here, but Team Secret not really set up to make the call just yet. Well, now we know where they're going. <laughs> Five-man smoke straight through the middle lane. They don't really care about Roshan. It's daytime, the night. The time to strike is right now for Vici Gaming. Oh. They run into Misery, but he gets that quick blink away. But remember, Vici Gaming have several blinks of their oh, own. They're going to catch Misery. The BKB. the BKB goes out. But that is still something expended from Team Secret that they didn't want to have to do before the actual team fight. And immediately they're setting up Observer Wards. Now nighttime comes up in 10 seconds with Pilot Eye's ultimate. So that was the, the little window they were going for since Pilot Eye did use it early and they're pinging on Roche. Will they get it in time basically? Aegis and Cheese, Darkness gets laid out. Eternal Envy's pushing out the bottom lane right now in order to get in position for this Roshan. Pilot Eye's gonna see into the pit soon. And they're, Roshan, he's a tanky bugger too. They're playing for the vision. They got the Observer Ward. These creeps are following. So Vici Gaming knows that Secret's coming. The dagger is coming in, the Ice Blast as well. They need to get away from this Ice Blast. They help the build to survive blast. the fight. It hits on two, and Roshan's still in contention, contention here. Rosh. 
Ooh, he's in a bad position. Oh, Fenrir gets the first step away. Shiva comes out from Ice Eyes. Ice oh. down. A couple of those heroes. They get a Daedalus proc. They're going to try and take out Pilot Dice. Well, Smithery first. The Static Storm gets played out. The Control 2. And the Shackle Shot completely with Fenrir. Now getting the Control into FY as well. Weeha, he's going to be going down. It looks like it's Snooper. is going to make the jump over. No, he wants Eternal Heavy first. He gets a small MKB hit. Hoping to be able to stall him up. Fenrir does finally go down. Burning as well as Super right on top of Eternal Heavy. But he does have that buyback. And he's going to need to expend it he's now. Trying desperately to win this fight. Weeha comes in. Shackle Shot doesn't last. Burning just making his run away. Ravage number two. It comes in, takes out Weeha, and now it's just a turtle heavy left against the whole world, and it's not enough. BG Gaming win the fight. Super might just very well go down to Puppy, but he dances himself away, and that's a wipe. Team Secret have lost five plus a turtle heavy times two, and they are well on their way to do whatever the hell they want in this game. Two buybacks. Uh, a is going to have ult in 15 seconds. Nothing to see from it just yet. They're going to try to scare them, make them think that they can contest this, but in reality... Yeah, you've got to make the play of your life here. Can he blink in time? Roshan ties just a bit too soon. The blink yeah. dagger wasn't up yet. And now know. it's Aegis for Ice Ice Ice, Cheese for Super, and still another 80 seconds on the clock for Eternal Envy Spectre. He just couldn't do that, honestly. That was his buyback. If he died there, game is over 100%, because they'd be dead for Wind Ranger for like 100 seconds. Spectre would still be dead another 80. They'd just gone up mid and thrown it. Uh, the respect from Vichy Gaming, though, the fact that they're not immediately just going five man down mid, knowing that the Spectre does not have buyback and is down for so long, they're respecting the angle of the rest of Team Secret. If they get a really good vacuum, ice blast combination, there's still enough damage to threaten Vichy Gaming. Yeah, and not just that, they don't have Ravage or Refresher for up to 70 to 90 seconds, depending mm -hmm. if you want both. They wait, they get those abilities, and then they fight. They don't want to throw this fight. Jump in, Ice Ice Ice, the first to show himself in the Team Secret base. Takes a small swipe at that range rack, and this is all they need. 30 seconds left until the Spectre is back up. BG Gaming all about the objectives right now. Weeha makes his jump in, immediately chained up, and the response is there from BG Gaming. They're gonna try and lock down Weeha, force out the BKB. He jumps around, Puppy, immediately the target from Super. Doesn't have enough damage, though, only forces out the Ghost Scepter. The Glyph is up. But the barracks is going down. They need to kill somebody right now, but Ice is just going to try to zone. He's taunting them. Oh, wow. The Ice Blast is going to come in. Weha now has to match up against Ice Ice Ice. The Ice Blast lands. Misery is going to be able to take out the Ember Spirit. That's a star. Team Secret. They're holding up against Mega Creeps. They need a many, many kills here against Michi Gaming. But Misery, he's not going to have his opportunity to pursue. Eternal Envy will. Where is he going to be going in this one? Looks like he's going to try and take down Fenrir first. And it looks like the Juggernaut will be able to get himself away. As it's just going to be the support. Turn around. Winter's Curse. Eternal Envy. He's not going to be able to get that much, it looks like. Fenrir, he's got to blink up. He's out. Beachy Gaming get Mega Creeps, and they're actually going to be able to get away with almost everybody. All right, this is pretty much one of their last chances. I mean, they can delay this for a very long time due to having Radiance and the Heart on Spectre. He basically can't die to just Creeps. Ice, Swimming ice, away ice, in style, Ice. He feels it. He feels like this game is in the bag. But Team Secret, they still have one response left. The Yolo play. <laughs> Go straight into the enemy base and get a pick off if you can, and that'll be Fenrir. All right. A cheeky play, a turtle heavy. But he says, for Go for it, man. We've got the double damage on Weeha. We need to try and somehow force a fight, and that's threatening the tier fours, but they're just doing not enough damage. Are they going to win this game? Ember has buyback, but the other two heroes are dead for their duration. Envy shifting over, he wants to buy something to help him go for it. Oh, he sees some gems, there's a cheese. He gets oh, the cheese! He's got the cheese, what? Eternal Envy, hello, taking the tier four tower up next, and they're gonna it's focus on the protection. second one. The Glyph is gonna go down. They're losing the up, up against Mega Creeps, pushing in through the side lanes, and it looks like Team Secret, Dean, it's not worth the attempt. The Glyph has forced them back, and that tier four tower is now gonna heal back up the full HP off the backdoor protection. Oh. Looking for that glimpse, they also have the boots to travel in from Super. He has his blink dagger forward, hoping to be able to get a slight of his chain. Oh. Salt or retreat. Jackal shot turn around. The Can they actually control him? He's gonna he die. Goes he's gonna he dies. Away. He goes down, but he has buyback. He's gonna jump back in. He knew he was gonna die, and he welcomes death no, at this geez. point because VT Gaming are going all the way. They'll take out three of Secret, and Secret will finally appease. BG Gaming's bloodlust, they call it GG. Game number one goes to the Chinese BG Gaming. What an upset. I mean, it's, they were very close teams in the recent match in Anyang. It was 3-2 with Secret's advantage, so Vichy Gaming can take this, but there was a period of time where it just looked like Secret had